man. Everybody have a wonderful week. All right, all right, all right. Good evening, Miss Joyner. Good evening, good evening. Amen, amen. Glad to hear your voice. Glad to. All right. Awesome, awesome, awesome. You are more than welcome. Good evening. Good evening, Miss Little John. Good evening, Mr. and Mrs. Stokes. Love everybody. Love each and every one of you. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for joining in. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Amen. Amen. That's supposed to be Pastor Michael. Oh, man, my brother, love you, man, love you. I love each and every one of you for joining in. God bless you, bless you. It's truly good to hear each and every one of your voices. It just means a lot. God is so awesome. He is awesome. Can we all tell the Lord thank you for the small things he's done in our life, for the big things he's done in our life? Can we tell the Lord thank you for the few things that we have just seen him do and what he's going to do in our life. Amen. Tell the Lord thank you every chance you get. I can't tell him thank you enough because I heard the old people say, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? What would I be doing? Who would I be? Man, I tell you, we all have a story to tell. Let your story be known to the world. Don't hold it. Tell the whole world the goodness of the Lord and what he's done for you. Amen. He ain't finished with you yet. We are all under construction. Amen. And as he continues to do things in our We are waiting on this journey of good cheer, and we are waiting of good cheer, amen? And as we are getting started, we will go ahead on and get started. Thank you for all of you who have joined. Thank you for those who have joined on the Facebook page and all of those who are trying to join in. Lord, I continue to pray with them and pray for them that they will be able to join as seen fit. Amen, amen, amen. First off, I'd like to give an honor to God for allowing uh, allowing him to let us have this platform. Lord, thank you for letting us have this platform. And I'd like to thank our pastor, Pastor Larry E. Simmons Sr. of Shallow Baptist Church for allowing me to be able to speak. Amen, amen. Let us go before the throne of grace. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for how you have breathed on us one more time and allowed us to see yet another day. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings in which you bestow upon us daily. And, Lord, how you continue to watch over us. Lord, you are always so loving and so kind. Lord, your grace and your mercy is always sufficient enough. And, Lord, we just thankful for everything that you're doing in our life. Lord, the small things, even to the big things, even the things sometimes we don't say thank you for. We want to say in all right now. We want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for taking care of our families. Thank you, Lord, for the, the finer things in life that we are able to uh, be able to enjoy. And, Lord, the activity of our limbs, Lord, being able to see, touch, hear, smell, and taste. Lord, no, no amount of money can measure up to these things. And, Lord, you give them to us freely. And, Lord, we want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the love in which you always continue to bestow upon us daily and how you continue to guide us in the way in which we need to go. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit and which you have put in us and allowed him, 
uh, to be the comforter in our life. And Lord, as we go forth tonight in this Bible study, Lord, let it be all of you and none of Larry Simmons Jr., Lord. And let me not add to or take from this word that you have given. And Lord, we ask that those who are trying to join and those who have the will to join, may they be touched also. Lord, we come to you now in this prayer and this is our prayer in Jesus' wonderful name we pray and the people of God say amen, amen, and amen. God has been dealing with me and I tell him thank you for the small things, which is what we're going to speak on tonight, the small things. And as we are speaking on these small things, I want you to just take a look into some of the small things that go on in your life. Sometimes we overlook them, but we want to highlight those things today as the uh, objective tonight is to look at the small things and pay attention to detail. You know, a lot of times we don't pay very close attention to detail, but tonight I want you to take a look into the scriptures that is uh, provided. And I want you to think about these last days that Jesus has been on earth. And as he is leading up to the cross, we're going to look into a few things. Amen. We're going to look deeper into the last events leading up to Jesus giving his life on the cross. The last few steps he will take in this world and the task at hand for our Lord and Savior, the cup that he must bear. We understand in Luke 9 and 23, if anyone come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. We have heard this over and over and over. But do you really envision it? Have you really understood it? You know, I've heard it all my life. But do you really think about it? Have you really allowed it to sink into your mind? What is really going on? What do you see when you think about the Lord giving his life on the cross? What do you see? Let's, let's just take a moment and just think about what it is that you see as you envision Christ giving his life on the cross. Amen. I look at these things differently now today, you know, because I understand from the aspect of which he has given us how and why he did it and what he went through. And it's unbearable. A lot of us would never be able to do what he done. We could never understand. But what did you see in this vision as you are thinking? Are you still staring in awe? Though Jesus carried his own cross as we should, nor does he need any help from any earthly vessel. One here is mentioned in this walk. And as we look in the gospel of Mark, we're going to look in the Gospel of Mark and we're going to look at the 15th chapter. And as we look in the Gospel of Mark 15th chapter, we're going to the 21st verse. A certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way in from the country. And they forced him to carry the cross. They forced him to carry the cross. As the soldiers led him away, they seized Simon from Cyrene who was on his way in from the country and put a cross on him and they made him carry it. And Mark, as you look at this scripture, it says behind Jesus. And as you want to look at the small details in Luke 9 and 23, we just discuss if anyone would come after me, which he says after me, let him deny himself. So as we see here, Simon is coming behind Jesus and they made him carry the cross with him. Amen. I want you to just take and envision what's going on here. Matthew 27 chapter and we're going to look at the 23rd chapter and the 26th. As the soldiers led him away, they see Simon from Cyrene who was on his way from the country and put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. This is another gospel where it is telling you the same thing, but it's in another detail. Amen. We're going to keep on looking into Matthew 27 and 32. Now, as they were going out, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon, and they forced him to carry the cross. Now, here in these three uh, uh, gospels, you notice that they speak of this man, Simon. They just didn't say a man. They said Simon. So what is the significance in that? 
nothing is by coincidence. Amen. Nothing is by coincidence. So as we look into Simon, a little bit of Simon, I won't go into great detail, but I'll just briefly go through a little bit of Simon. He was from Cyrene. And as you see, Cyrene is at the top of Africa. And we would know Cyrene to be now in the modern day Libya. And we would like to say Simon is of color, of a uh, descent of our people, as we know uh, from Africa, and you look a little bit deeper, it's not far from Egypt, but it's still in the part of Africa. They're living off of the coast. Now, Cyrene happens to be a place where there are a lot of Jews. So uh, here you're looking at a man who just came in, total stranger. He comes into the country. He's caught up in the midst of this parade. It's not a parade, but what's going on? Christ is being crucified. And here are the Roman soldiers who are just stepping in and just say, get in here and pick up this cross with Jesus. He has no significance, has no significance whatsoever. God don't need him to carry this cross. He doesn't need to be in this picture, but God sees fit. To have him in this picture. Why does he have him in this picture? Amen. Let us continue to carry on. He is going. Christ is going up to this place called Golgotha. And this is where they go to crucify uh, 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 Christ. And this is known as the place of the skull. Why is it known as the place of the skull? Many people were crucified here. Uh, skulls were all over. Or you see maybe some would say the indentions on the mountain would look like what a skull would, uh, would look like. But needless to say, this place was almost 600 meters. Some say 400. But two football fields or, or, or so have you. That's a long way to walk. And not only that. Through that walk, he had to walk with a cross on his back. Not only that, they had beaten him. He hadn't had any water. None of his friends were around. Mind you, all of this is going on while our Lord and Savior has to walk. And through this walk, they have brought in this man, Simon, out of nowhere. And who knows there is no coincidences in life. There is no coincidences in life. And as you are going on with this story, I want you to look at a few things. And I'm going to make three points as we are going through these scriptures. Number one, the world considers you a nobody, but God says different. The world may consider you a nobody, but God says different. You see, the Romans, they pulled out Simon as if he was a nobody. You know, he, we can get into certain things, but I want you to just see that he's just somebody coming in and they threw him in. Didn't think anything of him. So now he has to endure some of this disrespect and the things that Christ is going through. Though they have looked upon Simon as being nobody, they seized him and made him help Jesus with the cross as they may have looked at him as humiliation towards jesus this act briefly shared with simon now is being shared with our lord can you imagine walking with jesus can you imagine being in this moment now let's say you was out there and somebody told you to go over there and help jesus what would you say how would you feel you wouldn't want to be a part of it but guess what sometimes in life you are part of things because those things need to happen if you was a part of that, what would you say? Man, I ain't trying to do this. Some people would say, I, I got things to do. I, I, I don't want to be part of what's going on right here because I, would, I just want to stay out the way. I got problems on my own. But little did Simon know that short walk with Jesus would impact his life forever. How many times have you noticed Jesus as he impacted somebody, whoever he touched, their life changed forever? Look at us. Prime example. When God touched us when he sent his son and his son left us the comforter and as we have learned to become christ-like christians we have changed forever can i get an amen we have changed forever anybody know what i know some people know what i'm talking about are you still imagining what is going on here let's just keep walking i want you to continue to keep taking this walk because i want you to imagine what simon is going on jesus walking simon is walking and both are carrying this cross and for simon each step seems longer and longer in the beginning it's rough simon felt like it was him being persecuted being laughed at, being made fun of, things thrown at him, even spat on as they did with Jesus. Simon sees a view of the world he'd never seen before. 
He sees a view of the world he never seen before. Can you imagine now that he is in this view? He has never seen this view before. But here is Simon as he goes on. He sees firsthand what Jesus has to endure. He starts becoming connected. He sees the lashings on his back. Now, as we know about lashings, these are not just regular lashings, but I, I've, I've put up some lashings as you see how the, the cuts can leave on your back and how blood drips from it. Not only that, the thorns were put on Jesus' head as a crown. But guess what? Jesus endured it for us. How many people can really take a beating like that and continue to go on as he did? And this is what Jesus is going through. And this is what Simon has to see as he's walking behind Jesus. Amen. Point number two. We strengthen each other. We strengthen each other. Though Jesus is our Savior, he encouraged Simon. Can you imagine what Jesus, his impact had as he walked with Simon? Can you imagine the aura that came off of him? Simon encouraged Jesus. Simon is moved by what Jesus has endured and feels a deeper desire to make it to this crucifixion. The closer they get, the more now, though his part may be almost over, he wants to see the best for Jesus. The more he gets to walk, the more he wants to see the best for Jesus. You see, when you first start off with this walk, when you first start off with this walk, it's rough. This walk is rough when you start off being a Christ, like when you start following Christ, when you become a Christian. It's not easy, but you have to endure these things. But as you go on, like with anything, it becomes a little bit better because you are ridding yourself of old habits, selfish ways, self-centered thinking, sinful habits. And now your mind renewed, the Holy Spirit guides you in a better way of living holy righteous and to the point where you can become closer to god you feel his presence you hear his voice you can't imagine life without him though it comes with a cost what a great reward for such a small sacrifice amen what a great reward for such a small sacrifice the nobody in the world's book is somebody in god's eyes look out for your brothers and sisters along the way we strengthen each other and God is pleased. Amen. I want you to see these small little details that are, uh, are shown here as Simon is walking behind Jesus. Can you imagine walking behind him and you know this is the Savior? Maybe he didn't even know Jesus, but imagine what he is enduring. You know, we know our forefathers went through slavery. But they didn't go through what Jesus went through. Jesus went through something told. It's, 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 it's unimaginable what Jesus went through. And to take part of this first sight, he sees a first view of what's going on. Amen. Third point. Third point we're going to speak about. One thing that I tell you, I, I, I'm so glad I got a, a hold of it right now. Find humility. Find humility. Your humility is contagious. Amen. Your humility is contagious. Simon is humbled in his walk with Jesus. He didn't have that in the beginning, but following Jesus footsteps, he learned how to have compassion, how to stand when the world was against them, how to have his brother's back, even when it wasn't even the original plan. We, you know, we, we, we need to work on that. How to have our brothers back, even when they want the original plan. When you thrown into something and you there with your brother, you need to stand with him. Amen. Don't let him stand out there by himself because it could have been you and you don't want to be out there by yourself. But here we see how this is being shared. And let's look at Esther. We'll look at Esther. And as Esther is speaking here in fourth chapter, 14th verse, we'll look all the way down. And who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. As you are looking here in Esther, what she's speaking about is Mordecai. And as Mordecai now, he has a chance to speak up. He has a voice. And God had him there for such a time as this. What does God have Simon here for such a time as this? Why are we here right now? Why are we going through the things we're going through? Why do we see people like we see them? Why do people come to us when they need us? Why do people call us? Because God has us here for such 
a time as this. God knows he was coming. He knew Simon was coming and he knew that he would carry this cross with him. Why would he allow him to carry this cross with him? Why would he allow him? Jesus is now uh, 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 known as our Lord and Savior. They are seeing these things, but as you see in the scriptures, Jesus came to serve. Allow someone of no significance to benefit from his glory. He allowed Simon to benefit from this all because he bared the cross. Don't think that just because the situation you are in, the difficulties you face, the opposition against you, that Jesus will not send you some help. If you have been faithful and just bearing your cross, you feel the connection. Despite the rejection, the insignificant one he sends you may add more to your story than you think. You know, sometimes we look at certain people and we say, well, whoa, man, what they sent him over here for? We've all said it. Come on now. Come on now. Let's be real. Let's be real. We've been working a job somewhere and somebody come up and said, Lord, have mercy. What did he come over here for? Can I get somebody to be real with me? Can I be? Come on now. So I've, heard, I've even heard some old people say all help ain't good help. All help ain't good help, but here, here you see sometimes you will be given somebody that will give you a helping hand. The ones you would think that's supposed to help you don't help you, but God sends somebody to you. Imagine that. Just think about it. He sends somebody to you. Now, how is your humility towards that? I had to work on that. I'm still working on it. I'm still, I'm, my first, my first message is under construction. We are all under construction. God sent somebody to you. He said, in all, give thanks. He ain't saying some things, but in all, give thanks. Now, here we are in closing. In closing, I want you to thank. I want you to thank in closing. Though the world considers you a nobody, God sees different. Pick up your cross and follow him. And while you are walking, let's encourage one another. We strengthen one another. And if we look here, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 11, therefore encourage on another and build each other up just as, in fact, you are doing. Hebrew 3rd chapter and 13th verse, but exalt one another in, in NIV version, but encourage one another daily as long as it is called today so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. Amen. 2 Corinthians 13, 11. Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Strive for full restoration. Encourage one another. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. And find humility. Find humility. Let's look at James 4 and 10. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. Proverbs 22 and 4. Humility is the fear of the Lord. Its wages are riches and honor and life. Who is wise and understanding among you, as James says, third chapter and 13? Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. Amen. Where does our help come from? Our help comes from the Lord. Now, here we have noticed Simon and we have uh, understood what he did, but what 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 kind of impact did this have later on in life? As I'm coming to a close, what kind of impact does this have on the life that went on after that? Simon was the father of Rufus and Alexander, if you was to look in greater detail. And if you look in Romans 16 and 3, let's go to Romans 16 and 3 right quick. I'm not going to pull it up on the screen. I want y'all to read it. Romans 16 and 3. Do, 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 do. Romans 16 and 3. Do, 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 do. Uh, no. I want what I had. Bear with me. Bear with me. Bear with me. Bear with me. Acts 6. Look in Acts. I got it written down. I read it. I wrote it down somewhere. But as you look at, uh, if you if you look in the life of Simon, his mother, his wife, was the played a big part in Paul, the Apostle Paul's life. 
Amen. And Apostle Paul would be one of the ones that was sent out into the world to preach the gospel. Not only that, but Simon of Cyrene, you know, Cyrene had a lot of Jews. And as they had a lot of Jews, through this walk that Simon did, you know, they played a big major part in the first parts of the church. Amen. Not only that, but his sons was was amazed through, you know, what Simon had did because Simon here, his he got to see firsthand Jesus and he was you know, he got a first view of the crucifixion. Can you imagine you actually seeing this and having to go home? Now you're a believer in this gospel. Now you're starting to preach this gospel. Now it goes out into the world. You have become a believer. Amen. So in these small things in life, you do your own home, little homework on Simon. You'll find great details. I say pay attention to the details. You'll find great details in how these things came about. And look at your life. Look at the small details that are going on in your life right now. Don't just brush small things to the side. Pay attention to every little thing because God has a reason for everything that's going on. The flowers that bloom, the wind that blows, even you getting in your uh, car and stopping by, you might run past somebody and say, well, Lord, I won't, e I won't even come in this way. But you see somebody that you have passed and they need your help. It's small little things like that that impact your life. So continue to look at the details of your life. Pay attention to the small little things. It's something there. Amen. It is something there. And as we have come to a close, I hope something has been said that you could get from this. And I hope this has touched somebody. But for those who do not know Christ for themselves and you want to know him for yourself, will you come? If you do not know Christ for yourself, will you come? As long as you got breath in your body, it's never too late. I used to sit in church and, you know, when the preacher used to say, is there anybody want to give their life? You know, used to sit in the back and you want to get up, but you're scared of what other people are going to say. You scared of what other people are going to point at and they start snickering. But guess what? They ain't going to be there when it's time for judgment. Amen? They're not going to be there. Don't let the enemy rob you of the life that God wants to give you. You think you're living, but you're not living until you give your life to God. It took me a long time. It took me a long time. I went Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, year after year, and I used to sit right there in church and I'd be like, Lord, I'm, I'm going to get up one day. I'm going to get up one day. Thank God he let me see that day. Some people never saw. Some people still, still waiting for tomorrow and tomorrow may never come. Amen. God gives you the opportunity now. Will you come? If you are on Facebook, if you want to come, come. I will help you. I'm young. I'm still learning. We all learning. We all students. We are all under construction. We help one another. That was my second point. Encourage one another. Amen. If you do not have a church home and you would like to be part of the Shallow Baptist Church community, our family, our church, Will you come? We will accept you. We're going to love you anyhow. But if you want to be part of our family, our, our arms are wide open. Amen. If you have anybody you would like prayer for, please put them in the comments. Let's pray for somebody. Every week we're going to pray for somebody. You ain't just got to pray for one person. Call out plenty of people. Call out everybody that's on your mind so the Lord can hear those people, those names that need prayer. Amen. i give you a minute. Let's pray for somebody. Put them in the comments. Speak out if you're on the conference call, if you need prayer for somebody. Mother Liggins, we will keep her in prayer. Let's continue to pray for our pastor and first lady. Let's continue to pray for uh, not only our church family, but all of the ministers, all of the pastors, all of the children of God who are out here 
striving to do right, striving to live righteous and holy every day. Jose Stokes, Miss Marie Boone. I like to pray for my co-worker, Mr. Elliot. I like to pray for a couple of my co-workers, uh, Mr. Johnson, Mr. Ken. Uh, I got a lot of people I like to pray for, but I'm gonna ask God to continue to keep them in prayer. Amen. As we are coming to a close, we're going to get into prayer. Let's go before the throne of grace. The Simmons family and the church family. Nicole Simmons, amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you now. Thank you for allowing us to have this time. Thank you, Lord, for this word that you have given. And thank you, Lord, for how you have inspired us, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the love that you continue to pour on us. And thank you, Lord, for how you continue to watch over us. And now, Lord, as we are leaving from this uh, Bible study, and Lord, we ask that you continue to help us. Lord, the ears that have heard this message, may they be able to receive this message in the manner in which you have given it to me. Lord, those who are, have been offered up to pray for, Lord, I ask that they be touched. Lord, send somebody out to them so that they know that you are still thinking about them, that they are still loved, that you are still God, that you have not forgot about them, Lord. Lord, we ask special prayer for each and every one of them, Lord, as they are trying to do better and get better daily, Lord. We asking that your angels are staying encamped around them, and Lord, that we continue to pray for them daily, Lord, because we want them to stay under your covering at all times. Thank you, Lord, for how you have used me tonight to come forth with this word, and, and, and Lord, we pray that this word will continue to meditate in our hearts, Lord. Thank you for everybody who has joined and those who had the mind to join. Bless them all, and as we go out, Lord, away from this uh, Bible study, but never away from your anointing, Lord, we want to say thank you for all that you're doing and everything you continue to do, Lord. As we rest tonight, we ask, Lord, that you keep your angels encamped around us as we rest, and as we get up in the morning, if you see fit, if, you're, if, if it's your will, Lord, allow us to get up and be thankful one more time. Lord, we love you, we thank you, we honor you today, and this is our prayer. In Jesus' wonderful name, we pray, and everybody would say amen. Amen and amen. I love each and every one of you. Thank you for joining in. God bless each and every one of you. I will keep you all in prayer. Continue to keep me in prayer. Amen. Y'all have a wonderful night and God bless you. Pastor Simmons also wants me to give his regards to say he loves each and every one of you and he will see you Sunday. Thank each and every one of you for joining in. Amen. Amen. Y'all have a good night. Good night.